<laughs> All right. Hello, 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 and welcome to Pitch Zone, a weekly gathering of coaches that love nothing more than helping presenters fine tune their pitch. At Pitch Zone, we evaluate a short three minute pitch. And my name is Claudio. I'm a pitch coach, a presentation coach. And I'm joined by three other coaches and, of course, our presenter today. Without that, nothing would work. So let's bring him in, AJ Chagorta. How are you today, AJ? I'm very good, thank you, Claudia. I'm really, really good, really excited about the pitch. You struck me from the first moment that we met as an extremely diligent founder, really exemplary. Uh, the way we met was actually, you just reached out to me and you asked, can you take a look at my pitch? And I did, and I was floored. We made a couple of small little adjustments, improvements, whatever. So I am so excited to see your pitch here today. AJ, are you ready to meet your coaches for the day? I am. Bring them oh. out. All right. So we'll uh, shuffle things around here. Let me introduce first and foremost my dear friend Nathan Gold, joining us from San Francisco, one of the top pitch coaches in the world. And, well, what else can I say? <laughs> so, Nathan, how are you today? Uh, with that introduction, I think I'm doing a lot better than I was two minutes ago, but thank you. Oh, I wow, that. wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. But it looked like you were doing really, really well as well. And then, of course, we also have a couple of people here online on YouTube, Fancy and Fleek, Jevana. She was a presenter a couple of weeks ago here. And Massimo Peroncelli from a hot and smoggy Thailand. Yes, the air quality could be a little bit better. And we have also Henrietta Sutoris. She was here the last two weeks as a presenter. Henrietta, it's really, really great seeing you again. And with that, let's continue bringing in some more coaches. I'm going to put Nathan right up here into the coaches row. Bring in Scotty Spurson, also from San Francisco. Scotty, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. And it's chilly here, but happy to be on the pitch zone. So. It's chilly and you are happy. And that makes, of course, us happy as well. It's always a real, real pleasure to have you here. Your focus is language. And I am really, really curious to hear your feedback today after you hear AJ's pitch. And with that, I'm going to put you into that corner here as well and bring in Rick Pollack. Rick, how are you today? I'm doing very well. And here mm -hmm. in uh, rainy Boston, no snow today, but just kind of a cool rain and happy to be here and looking All forward right. to hearing AJ's pitch. Great, great, great. I love your switch up of the background. I think this looks yeah. much, much nicer. It's very warm, very cool. Very, very good. All right. So with that, AJ, are you starting to get nervous? No. no. Nice deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. AJ, you are such a seasoned presenter. Uh, I think, you know, you can just dive in. I'm going to switch the scene to just you. And once you start okay. talking, I will start a timer just above you, try to keep the pitch to about three minutes. All right? Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. All right. And with that, AJ, the floor is yours. A house key, as simple as it may look, holds within it the power to unlock so much more than just a door. I can remember the feeling when I picked up the keys to my house, the excitement. I knew this was the key to my dreams and I couldn't wait to turn my house into a home. But you know, for many renters, this dream is just that. It's a dream. Let's take Jack and Sarah, who've been renting their home for years and have paid the rent on time and taken care of the property 
But when they have an issue, such as a broken appliance, a leaking roof or heating that just doesn't work, they call their landlord or their agent and no one returns their call. When they're promised that somebody will be out to fix the issue, no one ever shows up. And I'm afraid this is how millions of renters feel every day, left to live in substandard housing that can put their health at risk. At Very Wise, our mission is to empower renters across the globe. And today, I would like to share with you the opportunity of investing in, rent, in Very Wise. There are 9 million renters in the UK and 43 million renters in the USA and over 200 million renters in Europe, which nobody has addressed up until now. Now our renters can go and sign up to Very Wise. And for £5 a month, we empower them in three very, very particular ways. So we've got some AI that checks the compliance of the property and ensures the landlord carries out their legal obligations, keeping our renters safe. Members then have access to a solicitor and a mental well-being counsellor, and that ensures that they're comfortable in their home. And finally, when there's an issue with the property, Very Wise takes care of it resolving it directly with their landlord as members have access to legal quality expense policy. So let me share with you why this matters so much to me. You see, being a man of colour, grown up in the 80s, I know a thing or two about facing prejudices. I experienced it firsthand and I know how it feels to be powerless, just like many renters. I understand how to solve this huge problem how do I know this? Because I've sat on the other side of the fence for 25 years as a landlord and as a letting agent. I know how to scale and manage a team. And thanks to the 10 years I spent in management training, I grew a team and I've also recruited over 1,500 people, not once, but twice. So the next time you take out your key to open up your front door, I want you to remember the millions and jacks and Sarahs of this world and think, how your investment could be the key to our success. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. AJ, this is unbelievable. Um, you've just blown my mind with your delivery. What a superb, superb performance. This wasn't a pitch, this was a performance. I love it. Here are some of the comments that came in while you were presenting. Wow, very engaging already. And that one came in after about 40 or 50 seconds. So <laughs> well, well done in getting the audience's attention and really pull them in. Uh, another comment. Love the opening, the prop, the story, ticked all boxes, small tech detail. The video was wobbling quite often. I noticed that as well, you know, when you bumped your, your desk, uh, small detail there. And then when you said five pounds a month, why not show a five pound note? Perfect. I love it. Love Perfect. It. Great, great feedback here, Massimo. And, uh, and then his comment actually goes on. But I loved all of it. Really great. And Massimo is difficult to please sometimes. He is very, very <laughs> critical. So you passed the Massimo test. Uh, I did forget to ask you what the audience for the pitch was, but it was so obvious. It was really so obvious after a minute or 90 seconds already that this is for investors. So all of the feedback uh, coaches put on your investor hat and deliver the feedback according to that. So let's start the round of feedback. Let me bring in Nathan. Nathan, okay. what kind of feedback can you share with AJ? Uh, let's see, AJ, uh, just to reiterate what Claudio said, I was very happy to watch you. And the way you delivered gave me, uh, I guess you could call it goosebumps in a way, because you had me from the beginning all the way through. There wasn't a moment where I decided, okay, I get this. I'll just go make a note and I'll catch up to whatever he's saying in a moment or two. So you put together a, a beautiful storyline 
that kept me engaged all the way through. And I, I not only felt what you feel about what you're doing at the end, but there were several places during that you brought me in and I felt what you were saying. I heard, of course, as we all do, but when I can feel what the speaker feels when they're speaking, it goes to what Claudio was always telling the world, make sure the audience feels the way you feel and you've done your job. So well done there. I especially like the key metaphor. The key is got so many possibilities and I won't take the time now, but just think about, I mean, you could send an investor a key in a box and I look forward to meeting you. I'll tell you why I sent this to you when we meet. Uh, things like that. And I mean, it's just brilliant. So uh, my hat's off to you for using a metaphor uh, that will probably be the thing people remember. Oh, you're the key guy, right? You're the key, you're the house key. And it's so appropriate. That's that's the thing is it's so appropriate. And and yeah. I mean, as a giveaway, as a handout at a, at a trade show or at an investor meeting, you just hand put a key right on the jury table and say, here's your key, you know, and, and they'll never forget you. Never, ever. That was an unforgettable presentation. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you so much. High praise indeed from, from Nathan. Brilliant. I don't BS. Yep. So, yep. Uh, and, and I love the idea. I just like to say, I love the idea of giving the key to an investor pre-pitch. Love it. Never thought of that. Thank you. Yeah, and you could put your logo on it even. You know, they make keys that have logos and things on them. So yeah, no, I, I was thinking the same great. thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I thought uh, no, I thought it was great. You, you almost do you have a theatrical background? You, you have a theatrical voice. <laughs> I think. Oh no, oh, no, <laughs> no. Which is a compliment. You ha you have great presence, is what I meant to say. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, uh, so I was I wondering did. if you had any kind of um, acting training or that sort of thing. So no, it was very engaging. Um, I thought maybe it looked like you were reading a little bit. I'm not quite sure. Um, not not sure there if you were, but I could see your eyes moving. Where, yeah. yeah, there yeah. were a couple of points where I uh, I was reading. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, just a little something to polish up, and then also um, you talked about the number of renters that there are in the UK and in Europe, and how there isn't. Well, I don't know if there's a service like this. I didn't know if you said nobody else is doing this. It, it, which I would assume no one else is doing that. So I think you could bring that out a little bit more, but I, I didn't hear. So this is an investor pitch, which, which wasn't announced at the beginning to, to the entire audience, but so what is the marketplace valued at? What it, I didn't hear the financials coming through and I didn't hear your ask at the end. Those would be my biggest, um, um, uh, uh, you know, offers of advice. So if you're at, if you, if you want investors, then I, then I'd also like to hear, and please join us in this, please join us in this journey of making renters feel more secure. It's a win-win for the, for the renters and, you know, property owners should keep up their, <laughs> keep up their buildings. And we see it as, uh, you know, I don't know how many billion dollar market or, and are you just starting in the UK? I mean, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit more of your ask and where you're going, what you'll do with money and where you're going with it. Okay. Can I just ask yeah. then, Scotty, on that, one of the things that has like been um, said to me about some of these pictures is what you want to try and do, which is what I hope it, I do, is the objective isn't to give them everything. It's to give them enough to say, actually, I want to hear a bit more. Like, you know, you've, you've raised those questions if you're interested, then you would then be more inclined to say, okay, AJ, let's, let's book a, let's book a call and let's discuss, or do you think it's not enough? I think you have to, you have to determine which audience you're talking, you know, which audience you're talking to. And you're right. You do want to spoon feed just enough information to them so that they want to ask more questions. Maybe I missed it. I'm seeing some some of our coaches' notes here that that you did have the ask there, and I apologize that I missed it. Maybe I was making my own notes. Um, but I think as an investor, you, you know, are you looking for fifty thousand pounds or a million pounds? You know, like what what's the scope of yeah. this, or where are you in the investor cycle? Maybe just some general, something more general. Yeah. No, and again, I apologize if no, I missed it. So. 
yeah. And then yeah, um, there, there was just there was just one word at the end. I, I thought you started to speed up a little bit at the end, maybe as you got past the three minute mark. There, when you talked at the end, making millions of Jack and Sarahs of the world feel more secure. I thought that just went a little bit fast, and world world was tricky to hear. Okay, all right, more pauses. <laughs> just slowing it down a little bit. You you know you don't need to. It, it just takes time physically for our mouths to to move, <laughs> to get into position, <laughs> to create really clear sounds. And the pauses, I think for the most part, your pauses were terrific. Um, everything was well-timed, but we can use them to, to our advantage. I, I think it's really a person's super, what is it? It's your superhero skill, you know, or superhuman skill. If you learn yeah. how to pause, because not everybody yes. is comfortable doing that. And it allows your audience to really hear, like intuit what you said, not only hear the words, but understand where you're going with them. And that's, that's a really, yeah. it's a superpower. That was the word. Those were the words I was looking for. Yeah. And I, I agree with Scott. Yeah. I agree with Scotty on that as, uh, as well. I, I missed the ask. So I think the question is, is if the ask does have to be a little stronger and more specific. Uh, but AJ, one wonderful job. A uh, couple comments I have that I think you can just tweak it a bit. Uh, at the beginning, I, I, as, you know, as Nathan said, I love the prop, the house key, and then the example. Uh, okay, here's Jack and Sarah. I thought you know that makes it that makes it real. Uh, I thought you could have gotten to the problem just a little sooner. Uh, it was like 45 seconds when you mentioned the problem they have is they they have a problem. The landlord doesn't call them back, and but then right after that. You talked about the size of the market, which is important to investors, millions of renters, the size of the market at around the minute 10 in, then you mentioned the name Verowise and you, you have a bit of an accent. I know your company name, but <laughs> I don't know if all the investors do. So I think okay. you can be very clear with at the beginning, you know, we've started Verowise. This is a company that will empower renters. And I had that at around the, a minute 10. Uh, but I want to make sure you, you've got to get that name in. I don't know if, uh, I mean, it sounds like you'd be very wise to invest in this. There's a little play on words there or very wise for that. And I don't yeah. know if that's how you came up with the name of the company. But make sure that's clear. And okay. if you have some kind of you know, tie into that, because it just kind of, to me, I didn't hear the name that well. And... So I think you want to you want to enunciate that well and, and make sure people can can remember that. Uh, yeah, sure. But, and then you know, you're talking about you have the access to the solicitor, and I, I thought you had a good description of of what Verawise does. And then at, at two minutes in, you know, Verawise takes care of it. All the problems, Verawise will take care of it. So I think it's clear what you do. And then around two minute twenty, you started talking about your firsthand experience of being a person of color, of having that discrimination. So I think it's a little bit more your time. Investors are going to be investing in you. They want to know why you're doing this. And you know, it goes back to the Simon Sinek thing of, you know, pe people follow you because of the why. And I yes. think that's you've made it clear uh, on that, that you are doing this because you were a renter. You had this problem. You were discriminated against. You had landlords who never called you back. And this is your way now of doing that. And you know, you're showing some vulnerability. You're showing your commitment. You're showing why you're doing that. And at the end, I like how you brought that in to, you know, the, showing the key at the end and the millions of Jack and Sears, you know, the size of the market, uh, I think is good. But I would put that ask instead of in the middle at the end. You know, we, we want, you know, a million pounds and this is what we're going to do with the money you invest. I think that will make it clearer and then much more a much more specific call to action for an investor investor pitch so they know exactly wh what you're going to do with their money but excellent job aj i'd L love to see uh, the next version of it thank you great thank you gr great great feedback here rick and it's also in line with a comment that henrietta made online she says the intro is 100 percent valid you are a fantastic presenter like a good actor, I would add a bit about what you need the money for. I think that's, that's the key. It's really, you know, what, what are you planning to do with the money? How, 
how do you scale, how do you grow? So very, very good uh, comment here, of course, from Henrietta. And Jana, hello Jana, she commented that she loved the energy in the pitch, kept me engaged all the way. And every, oops, everything we have seen so far in terms of feedback really points in that fact that you are a superb presenter, AJ. And so you are, you are um, making it somewhat challenging for us to <laughs> find things to say, how can we make this even better? But we have so much time right now on the clock still. I want to quickly try something. Um, can you give me the first two sentences again of your pitch? Uh, the house key. It represents so much more than just the ability to unlock a door. Okay. Is that what okay. you wanted? Yep. And the pause that you did now after house key was significantly longer than the first time. And that's what I would have recommended, try out to make a really long, dramatic pause after that, right? Because what you're doing is you're engaging people's brains and you make them curious. What is he going to do? What is he going to talk about with that key? You know, I thought this was about an investor pitch or whatever, right? So, so make that pause as long as possible, like you just did right now, right? Yeah, I think I think that is uh, part of the essence of pitching, isn't it? And live pitching is so much different to, you know, practicing. And like you said there, it was on the spot, but we're now how many minutes in? I've been talking, I've done a pitch. So it slows everything down. And I suppose, I don't know if anybody has any tips to get me to this point at the start of the pitch, if you understand what I mean. So if I'm about to go in, what could you do 20 minutes before to get you to this calmer phase now? Nathan. <laughs> right, so excellent question. You actually told us the answer before we went online. Do you remember what you said when Claudio said to you, are you getting nervous right now? What did you say? Breathing. Do you remember? Nice deep Breathing. breaths. Nice deep yeah. breaths. So my humble opinion is whenever you want to get your state of mind and body into a different state, the two things to do is take control of your breathing so that it, it's not just clavicle breathing up high in the chest, but it's really all the way into your abdominal cavity and that and find a piece of music that calms you down or find a piece of music that when you hear it, it lights you up in a way that you want to feel when you walk out on stage, whether it's a virtual stage or a literal stage. So that's it, just breathing. And, and if you want to look up box breathing, combat breathing, or tactical breathing, it's actually a technique that first responders, fire, police, and military use to help these people get their heads back on earth when unexpected things happen like getting so I, nervous you can't walk out on stage okay yeah can i just add this this for me um i i relate it to something else i've done in my life which is boxing so <laughs> one thing that i was Perfect. always um my coach always said was you always start slowly the first round i know you're not going to do anything it's as if you're not in the zone and i think it's more about you know, and there must be something psychological that happens in me that I start off slower. And that's the bit that I'm trying to not necessarily the nerves. So, you know, going into a boxing ring is pretty nervous. Um, so I feel comfortable with the nerves. I just feel how do I get in the zone, the zone? Well, uh, we could spend all day on this one. But I would tell you that if you can use your experience in the ring, that's where I would go. And if you want to start fast, just just retell yourself a story. Pick up the story from the point where you're throwing that first calculated punch that you know is every bit of your body and skip the part in the beginning 
and it all depends on the audience and the situation. Maybe starting slow is exactly what the audience needs that morning, and then you bring it up and you win the fight, and they're all on the edge of their seats. So I'm not here to say dump the whole slow start if it's appropriate, which it was today. I thought your start today, starting on a nice slower tone, holding up the key, calculated, was spot on. So that's what I would do. And uh, since you have so much experience in the ring, whether it's one fight or a thousand fights, you have muscle memory up here that you can call on to get yourself in the state of mind you want to be in. That's what I would do. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Nathan. Yeah. Um, AJ, you'll be able to draw on your boxing experience really, really well. And I, I was able to help somebody who was a rugby player um, and he was so soft-spoken. He was from the South Pacific. And he would he mm -hmm. present it like this and he talked like that because he grew up never raising his voice. And finally, I said to him, what do you do before you go on the rugby pitch? So if you have a warm up that you do before you go boxing, before you go into the boxing ring, I would I would rely on that one, whatever your mental settling is. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I would add is in this medium, having my feet flat on the ground and sometimes barefoot is very, very grounding for me, along with checking your body posture. I assume you've got yeah. great, you look like you have great body posture. And if you're a boxer, you must know about your body. But as you get your, your body in line with your neutral spine, it allows for your entire diaphragm to work functionally. And that actually lowers your cortisol levels, increases testosterone, and it allows you to think clearly in any language. So you have English, the language of your business, and you may speak other languages that, that we don't know about. But, you know, if you think about it, you've got in the language of boxing, for that matter. And it just allows yeah. your brain to work more fluidly with your oral yeah, production when you are breathing well. Makes so much sense. Thank you for that, Sky. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then just one other thing to add, um, you might consider putting a logo up or having a logo somewhere behind you so that the name of the company continues to be in front of people. One of the corners, um, or, or maybe, I don't know if you have marketing materials. And also to that end, um, do you have current clients? It wasn't, I missed that too, if you talked about that. Yeah, no, we've got current clients over 5,000 at the moment. Yeah. So you're beyond beta testing and actually profitable, yeah. you know, again, getting back to the model, you've got to sprinkle yeah. some of those things in so I can go, oh, not only is this a good idea, <laughs> he's already got 5,000 customers. <laughs> so, hmm. Yeah, no, no, that makes a lot of sense. I, I do find that I still, even though this is a shortened version before I reached out to Claudio when he gave me his, uh, his his infinite wisdom, uh, very wise he was. Uh, see the play there. He, um, very good. <laughs> we, yeah, we said that uh, I, I, what I found difficult, I'm getting better at it, and I'm sure I, you know, we practice getting better. Actually, you know, within 30 seconds, I should be able to get the problem out. And then that leaves me two and a half minutes to add all of these other bits in. Um, I, I do recognize and I see other people as well. And it's, it's a topic of conversation where if I can pass on anything, I say, look, I was there before. The, the problem is the easiest bit because, you know, if, if it's a recognizable problem, you just need to state it and then move on with what your solution is, why you and all of the other bits that we've spoken about. But uh, no, very, very, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And AJ, I thinking of what you're talking about. And again, the comment I had before, which you really didn't get to the problem until 45 seconds. But yes. I'm curious, you held up the key and you called it the house key. But you're talking mm -hmm. to people who are renting apartments. So I'm wondering if there's a little discrepancy there. If someone looks at it and you say a house key is for homeowners. And I, I think of people, okay, well, here are the wealthy people who own homes and here are the people who don't have as much money who are renting. So if uh, you started think, it out, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. R yeah, Rick, the, the, I think there's a nuance in the, in the cultures probably that in the UK, uh, somebody, lots of people rent homes here, not just apartments. I know perhaps in the U S there's more, you would consider, the bulk of people renting an apartment. Yeah. 
Whereas here, there is no differentiator between an apartment slash flat, yeah. as we call it, or a home, right? A house. Yeah, but I, yeah. I think I think differentiation though, and maybe it's not class or that, but the difference between a house key and an apartment key is if you're renting, you have to deal with a landlord. And mm. Jack and Sarah can have uh, problems with landlords. So I think if you if you did it that way, uh, and you say, you know, this is a key. If it's a house key, it's fine. But if it's an apartment key, there's one thing that can become a, a an issue for you, a problem, and that's the landlord not responding to your 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 calls. Let me give the example of Jack and Sarah. But then if you do it that way, within the first 15, 20 seconds you're talking about landlord not responding and it's the apartment key versus the house key. So something that you, I, and I, I know you, you, you know, probably come up with something a lot better than what I'm, I'm uh, coming up, but I think that, that could be, cause you're saying house and to me that, that doesn't mean renting and maybe it's oh, uh, yeah. that. So, you know, th think about that because I think that lets you get to the problem sooner that gets people thinking about apartments instead of house. So yes. that might be a good yeah. way to, to start and also just differentiate that the key is different if you own it versus renting. And the problem is landlords don't respond to you and fix, <laughs> fix things yeah. that need to be fixed. And that's where Verowise can help. Yeah. No. So thanks. So, thanks. Right. So AJ, I, uh, I know you've heard a lot of great feedback today and I just, I don't want to take maybe be, be a downer here, but I do want to add a couple of things that I feel like you could tweak it a bit and make it even more compelling. First of all, I personally am not a fan of trying to tell a Jack and Sarah story in a three minute pitch. It okay. can work. It just feels like you could have used that little example just to state some of those numbers to get us wide eyed about how many and the market and things like that. This this might be a little controversial for some of the coaches online as well as people listening, but I try to direct you to get more concise in what you're saying to these investors because you've already experienced here today how in just three, three and a half minutes, we don't hear everything that you've said. We hear it, I'm sorry, but we don't remember or make notes on everything that you said. So I that's my opinion on that. And when you said, I'm afraid that millions of renters live like this every day, it felt like the word afraid was not the right word there. That might be the way you are communicating your, your concern, uh, but I would look yes. for different words there and be more proactive about the millions of renters that live like this every day. There are, or Can I just, the number. Yeah. Yeah, can I just ask on the Jack and Sarah thing? Sure, because that's interesting. Sure, sure. What 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 you state and um, it's controversial. You know, Some my, people I'm, love I'm, that. Yeah, well, well, no, I, I I don't. I I I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to, you know, I, whilst I have rented, it was a number of years ago. What I've done is I've sat on the 25 years on the other side of the table, which has given me this sort of domain knowledge of how renters are treated because they come to us or have. So how, how do I get Jack and Sarah or eliminate Jack and Sarah at some stage, but give the audience the ability to relate to it? Oh my God, I love my job. Rick is smiling because he knows exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say, I think, is just okay. go back into the recording of what you just said and perhaps skip the opening or get to the key key I, for myself, have lived this life 25 years. You just gave me the backstory and the goosebumps to say, wow, wow, this guy knows what the hell he is talking about. I don't care about Jack and Sarah at that point. I care that you just ins instilled a high level of credibility for what you're doing and what you just said. So you just gave it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I think that is best, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So today we have a couple of firsts. We have the first first was a presenter who presented in black and white. So to me, that was already something very, very unique and just shows AJ, you are thinking out of the box in every respect. The other surprise is we have another 
coach here today, and he was just joining us in the green room, Michael Marchuk, and he left a couple of really, really good comments in our back chat here. So let me bring up Michael. Michael, so good to see you. You have about five minutes. I think some of the points you made are so valid. Take it from here. Uh, thank you, AJ, for your presentation. It was really good. I appreciate uh, your energy. One of the things coming into an investor pitch, though, um, as polished as your presentation was, it almost came off as an advertisement by an actor. And that could turn people off because I don't see you as genuine or authentic if you're coming into this. And taking what Nathan just said, when you're talking about yourself and the experience that you have, I hear you. I don't, I don't hear the, the actor who's enunciating every word perfectly to allow you to speak so we can say your things within the 38 seconds that you have, right? Go into who you are. I want to know who you are. If I'm invested in you, I want to know, yeah, we got, we got, we did this. I've done this. I've, I saw this issue. I had this experience. We have 5,000 customers that didn't come up anywhere. If you said it, I didn't hear it until we started asking really deeper questions. These are basic things that an investor is going to want to know that, this isn't just a good idea you have. We're already doing this. And then when you make your ask at the end is, listen, we we're only, we're only reaching 5,000 right now, but we need to have, we need to grow and we need X amount of pounds to be able to get to a market of X in this region. And that's what our next step is. And we really need your help to do that. It's, a, it's, it's going into that. Bring out that business side of things because while it's interesting to hear about Jack and Suzanne and Sarah and whoever else you're going to talk about, it, the, the reality is as an investor, I don't necessarily care specifically about their, their backstories. I specifically care about that they're going to pay me every month for the service that we're offering and we can do it at a good margin. Um, all the marketing that goes on there is great, but that's not for me as an investor. Me as an investor is someone who says, I'm, gonna, I'm providing, providing these, these funds. I want to know that I'm going to get a return on these funds and that there's some upside to this over time. So it's good to have the story about the what, but make sure you also factor in that your audience is listening for all these details. And if they have to ask you them right after you've completed your advert, you know, advert, um, that's an issue, at least for me, is like you could have been, you could use your three minutes more, more wisely because sometimes you don't get other times other amount, yes. amount of time. So if, if they say, listen, that sounds interesting, but I don't know what you're talking about and I have to go now. So g get into some of those details and be able to, to give you maybe a 30 second pitch to be able to understand that the elevator pitch kind of thing, or I call it a dinner party pitch where you're talking with somebody, Hey, what do you do? Hey, we, we provide these services for folks to, to uh, renting and whatnot. And we have about 5,000 of them right now. We're looking to grow our business and be able to boom, 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 boom. It, it becomes yeah. a much more easy conversation. Now I can say, hey, that's really cool. I, I want to find out more information. Let's, let's schedule a longer term meeting so I can understand more details about the plans, how you're doing it, what your audience market, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, that's my, my feedback. But it was a great pitch. Right. Otherwise, I think, again, your energy and you know your stuff and you come across as very um, genuine when you're not in presentation actor mode. Thanks. I should take up a job as an actor, maybe. <laughs> 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 no, You're very, very good much, at it. Yeah, no, thanks very much, Michael. It really means a lot to get all of this feedback is, is key because, as you know, investors, <laughs> they're not going to give you that feedback. What they're going to give you is thanks, no thanks. Right. AJ, I had an experience many, many years ago that Michael reminded me of, and I'll share it with you and all of our audience, and I'm not ashamed at all to say this, but in my early 20s, I strived to create a perfect demo for the company I was working for. I was all about perfection. Everything worked perfectly. And I had spent Ooh. a lot of time perfecting it. And one day I was presenting to a group of people in the UK, it so happens, Logica PLC. And it was the last ditch effort for our company to get the deal. So they brought in me after a bunch of other demos. And long story short, I hit the perfect demo that day. And when we were walking out, the decision maker, six foot guy, walk, six five, walks over to me, puts his arm around me, he says, Nathan, whew, I've been in software a long time. I have never seen a demo as perfect as yours. And 
I'm not so sure I believed everything you said. Mm. I was almost in tears. I thought, wait, wait a minute, that's this. He, he said, I know you're not a salesperson. You're the tech guy. And actually, I do believe everything you said, but the way you said it made it too slick. So at that moment, <laughs> I decided to make mistakes in every demo. I'd click a button and go, oh, oh darn that. I shouldn't have done that. And I'd fix it. But I knew exactly what was going on yeah. just so I wasn't so much of an actor or perfect. So if you want to be more human with your audiences and not get that feedback that Michael just gave you and that I was going to give you, but I'm glad Michael gave it to you is don't strive for perfection. Strive for that excellence, that feeling where you know you have communicated the real you because that's who they're going to discover who you are and due diligence and beyond anyway. So Michael's point is very important for everybody to take into account. You don't want to achieve perfection when you're pitching. Excellence is the key. But I do want to just leave you with one final thing, and that is I loved your tone change, the way you changed your voice when you told us your backstory in the pitch. It was later in the game there where you said, and I myself, blah, blah, blah. that was elegant in how you changed the tone completely. That type of acting uh, all day long because that was sincere and genuine. So thank you for coming. Welcome back anytime. Thank you. Indeed, indeed. And um, AJ will be back in two weeks. So he's, I know him. He's a sponge. He's taking all of this in now. And I can't wait to see that. And just to double, double uh, up on Nathan's recommendation, take it to heart, AJ, because I remember the day very, very well. It was somewhere in February of 1996. And Nathan saw me present. And afterwards, he took me aside and gave me exactly the same piece of advice of shoot for excellence, not perfection. And that advice has been with me for the rest of my career. And like Nathan, you know, there's always a small little something built in that some look at, you know, it's a, it's a faux pas. Some look at, look at it as, hey, he's human. All right, AJ, uh, did you get what you were hoping for today? Yeah, no, that and so much more, so much more. Uh, I can't thank you all enough, the, uh, the feedback. And the, it's a journey. We all know it's a journey and uh, all of this feedback could take six months if we didn't have this. Awesome. Awesome. So I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks, AJ. Uh, until then, go out and unlock all of those doors that are in front of you. You've got the key, exactly. And with that, I want to thank all of the coaches, uh, including Michael, who quickly, impromptu, came in here. And of course, also all of our viewers that are online uh, providing us with comments as well. Uh, let's go viral. Came a little late today, but uh, I know you will watch the replay. And uh, uh, great job. One more time. And again, thanks to all of the coaches. And we shall see each other again next week. Have fun, everybody. See you.